I'm John McKee, editor of Messianic Apologetics. This is Messianic Theology Explained. At least, we hope so. Eschatology, the end times. When we see what is taking place today in the year 2024, and in fact, when we rewind a bit over the past three to four years and we consider some of the major dramas which we as a planet have had to go through, it's hardly a surprise why men and women of faith are talking about the end times. They want to know how close are we to the return of Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah. Today's Messianic movement is of the broad conviction that it has a very important role to play in the end times, especially with its focus on Israel, the salvation of the Jewish people, the land of Israel, Jerusalem, etc. And I am sure that many of you at your Messianic congregation, synagogue, Bible study, Torah study, have had discussions about the end times, whether formal discussions from your rabbi, congregational leader, or just informal discussions at Oneg, going out to eat with your friends, having coffee with them. As a ministry, Outreach Israel Messianic Apologetics, we have had many discussions about the end times or the last days. And it is a factor which features in our teachings and our approach to what the Messianic experience is all about. So what should be our framework, our general approach to eschatology or the end times? Because we are definitely getting closer to the return of Yeshua. We are one day closer to the return of Yeshua today than we were yesterday. As I have sorted through this myself, I've summed it down to four particular points I think we need to be aware of. Number one, a messianic eschatology needs to be pre-millennial. We need to affirm that Yeshua the Messiah returns to the earth prior to his thousand-year reign from Jerusalem. That would be considered pre-millennial. Yeshua returns before the thousand-year millennium. That is a literal reign of the Messiah on planet Earth over a restored kingdom of Israel. He's sitting on the throne of David, and that reign extends from Jerusalem, from Israel, over the entire planet. Secondly, Messianic eschatology needs to be post-tribulational, not pre-tribulational. The people of God should expect to endure the 70th week of Israel or tribulation period and be protected from various judgments, various plagues, etc. No differently than how the Lord protected ancient Israel when he dispensed judgments upon Egypt during the Passover. Number three, a messianic eschatology needs to be flexible in terms of the specifics. Many of us have opinions, perhaps even strong opinions, regarding the identity of the anti-Messiah or Antichrist and where he's going to come from. We doubtlessly also have opinions regarding different world players, different countries, different organizations, uh, different alliances, that sort of thing. I'm not saying that those opinions are always bad, but they need to be flexible and they need to be able to account for new information which 
we may not have today. None of us want to put some kind of an end time chart or timeline together where it's got to happen this way and yet with the addition of new information with events which we could not have forecasted or anticipated we just need to be flexible regarding those things and number four a messianic eschatology needs to be a little more reasonable with who we are as the disciples of Yeshua the call to discipleship from Yeshua the Messiah when you encounter his teachings in the Gospels is one of self-sacrifice for the service of one's fellow human beings and unfortunately in a great deal of contemporary evangelicalism and even the Messianic community Far too many people think, you know, I am entitled to have a certain job. I'm entitled to have a certain income. I'm entitled to be married and have children. I'm entitled to go on fancy trips. I'm entitled to this. I'm entitled to that. If you consider yourself to be part of an end time move, like the Messianic movement, which is to herald the return of Yeshua the Messiah, you have to be a disciple of Yeshua you have to emulate his example and you have to be willing to give up or put aside all of those presumed entitlements which the system believes you have to have in order to be a mature son or daughter of God if you look at the example of Yeshua if you look at the example of the Apostles and you compare them to what a lot of what the establishment expects or anticipates they weren't the successes which the establishment would expect. Let's just leave it at that. There are certainly many things regarding the end times or eschatology which we will doubtlessly explore in future installments of Messianic Theology Explained. But if you'd like to know a little more, I've got two resources which you may wish to consult. Uh, the first one is Zondervan's Three Views on the Rapture. Now, I do believe this uh, might be in a newer edition, uh, but this edition of Three Views on the Rapture deals with the pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation, and post-tribulational perspectives. So, if you want to get familiar with the different positions, you know, pre-trib versus post-trib especially, get this is a good resource to have. And another one you may think is a little surprising is this book, Every Prophecy of the Bible by John Wolverd. Now, John Wolverd was a major leader in pre-tribulationism, former chancellor of Dallas Theological Seminary, but this resource of his does catalog every prophecy of the Bible, or at least a, a considerable bulk of prophecy. And for many people who are in the Messianic community today who have abandoned a pre-tribulation rapture perspective, they still do hold on to various dispensational approaches to the end time scenario. Uh, so for example, uh, two years ago when the conflict between Russia and Ukraine started, there's a lot of talk about, is this the beginning of the Gog-Magog conflict? Ezekiel 38, 39. Now, we don't know for certain. Uh, we do continue to pay attention to events. But every prophecy of the Bible by Wolverd is a catalog not only of different prophetic passages, but also some of the interpretations we have to maneuver around, whether they are accurate or or inaccurate. If you have a particular subject or topic you'd like to see us talk about on Messianic Theology Explained, we have a stack of index cards right here and it is getting bigger. And I especially want to thank those of you all who have contacted me. Can you talk about this? Can you talk about that? The list is growing. 
As always, on behalf of Outreach Israel Ministries and Messianic Apologetics, thank you so much for your continued prayers, support, and donations for all of our efforts. We couldn't do this without you. We'll see you again next time with another installment of Messianic Theology Explained. Until then, God bless you, shalom, and take care.